So what we are talking about is a reaction in a tube where we hopefully can feed in a, a mixture of reagents and then hoping that when the mixture is passing along the tube that at the end of this tube we will get a continuous flow of products out. So that is what we are talking about today. How the, what are the fundamentals and how we can capture these into Dynakem models. And in order to do this, we need to go back a little in history and uh, look at the work from by Reynolds, who uh, investigated the flow through tubes and discovered that the characteristics of the flow changes as a function of the physical properties of the fluid, the diameter of the tube, and the flow velocity. And he observed that with low flow velocity, he observed what we call laminar flow. The flow actually is in layers, and the flow in the center of the tube propagates with a higher speed than the flow at the edges. So we will get a flow profile, and there is essentially no radial mixing. So uh, this propagation continues throughout till to the end of the, the flow. However, when we increase the, uh, the flow rate, then we observe that there is an increasingly radial mixing and in the ideal case, what we call the turbulent flow, we have a complete radial mixing and all the velocity vectors propagate with a constant speed. So we get something what we now call a plug flow. So we, we start here and it is like a plug moving from the start till to the end of the reactor. So that is what we uh, would like to, uh, to model. And Reynolds found that uh, depending on the physical properties, he could calculate a number to his honor, it's called the Reynolds number, which allows to predict at what type of uh, tubes we can expect laminar flow and at what type you can expect a turbulent flow. And you see in this simple formula, it looks like that the larger the density, then the higher is the Reynolds, uh, the, the diameter, D is the diameter, not the density. The diameter, the higher the Reynolds number is, but that's not true because the flow velocity here is linked to the volumetric flow rate by the cross section, and that is uh, uh, a function of the square of the diameter. So actually, the other opposite is, is true. So the smaller the diameter, you have larger Reynolds numbers, and the larger the diameter, you get smaller Reynolds numbers. So let's start first with a change in the tube construction. And that is quite an easy way because the Reynolds number was calculated for an empty tube. Nobody forces us to use an empty tube. And if we replace the empty tube by a static mixer, so that is uh, some uh, equipment inside a tube which allows a much, much better mixing so that we will get a plug flow which much, much uh, less flow rate. So in this case, with this, we can properly, when we have a proper design, we can go uh, bring down the required uh, flow rate for plug flow to about 100 milliliter per minute for a one meter long, one centimeter diameter tube. So that's great. However, we have to pay for this a little because this uh, frame here of, of, of metal that takes away some volume, usually 10, 15% or so. And that means the actual volume of this tube is now even shorter so that the residence time correspondingly will shrink. Okay, so that was quite easy. We have solved this. We know we have got a little to pay for by a sh even shorter residence time, but uh, we are now f very good in this position that we, we have plug flow. Okay, the next thing is we have to obviously to increase the residence time and that can be easily done by getting longer tubes and the practical solution of course is not to get now uh, let's say a 10 meters long uh, tube with one centimeter diameter but in practice we will have uh, uh, separated tubes which are bundled together and a solution, a typical solution for uh, a plug flow system, in this case, we assume that we have four of our uh, one meter long uh, tubes. 
uh, in reality, you can have whatever you like at, at residence times. And the point is that these four tubes are now connected. And these connectors need not necessarily have the same diameter. They will add to the volume because they have a certain length. They have a certain volume. And uh, so a construction typically to, uh, to, to fit the needs may be something like this. So now we have four tubes, three connectors, and uh, we have an increased residence time. And the point now is, OK, how will this, uh, what are the consequences in our plug flow reactor? How can we model this? And so I show you very briefly this, uh, the next stage, I would say. So you see there is no change actually in the, uh, in the process sheet, except I have removed the calculation of the uh, Reynolds number because that's no longer required. We, we now assume that we get plug flow, so uh, don't need to worry about the Reynolds number. The scenario sheet is not changed, so we have here two uh, different uh, flow rates. But what has changed is the data sheet. And now you see what is the, the, the reason behind using these uh, uh, mapping of uh, the length and the volume in the data sheet as uh, experimental data, if you like. This now gives us a, a view, a picture of our plug flow reactor. You can see directly here the green, I highlighted this. These are the single tubes and the space in between these are con the connected tubes. And you see here the imposed uh, diameter from the connectors are different. And now we will see, okay, look, concentrate on the temperature. You see the pipe temperature now is uh, uh, it's a little bit higher, 103.6. We had 100 point something before with the core current flow. And you see, as expected now, we start with the counter current flow here at time zero for DynoChem. That means it's the end of the uh, flow of the jacket. We have 26.5 and at start, we go with 15. So that is actually the scheme when we have counter current flow starting with 15 degrees, then we will have this temperature profile in the flow, in the, in the pipe, and we will get a warm up along the up to 26 degrees. But the use for the jacket, which of course are the, the most important part, they can be then uh, fixed by fitting uh, temperature data to to, to the U of the jacket. You see that is the temperature. You see it's much, much more than the 58, but that is the first temperature reading. Okay, that is the calculation with our assumed 200 watt per square meter Kelvin heat transfer. These are the data points, and you see exactly where the data points read. They are exactly in between the connectors here. So that is a map, and what we need to do in the standard way is now oh, we can use this for fitting. So we use open in fitting get this flow. We don't need to fit the length, the volume. What we can fit is the pipe temperature and probably the coolant if we like. And uh, so let's see, we want to get the U. That is what we, what we want to change. And we can do. And you can see the fitting works without any problems. 